name's Michelle. This is my so-called handmade life. I have a blog by the same name and that's my name on Instagram. On Ravelry, I'm Mamatronic. This is a knitting, crochet, craft, talking on and on kind of podcast. It's meant to be kind of like we're sitting and knitting together and I would love to knit while I talk to you, but oh my gosh, I wouldn't be able to think straight and I would of course ruin whatever I'm knitting. So you just knit while I talk and then please talk back in the comments because I like to comment, uh, respond to what you say and you help guide the conversation. No one really um, answered my question in the last episode, which was what are some old pattern sources like books, magazines, or uh, blogs, websites that you used to get your patterns from that you would still like to knit from. Uh, I didn't really get any responses about that, but um, if you want to rage about the algorithm ads on Instagram, how hard it is to use now for crafting inspiration, or maybe you love it, uh, this would be the episode to do that in the comments because that's what I'm going to be asking you. You know, if you're just sick of the press for video over images, images over words, Instagram, you know, ads have crowded out the photos, photos have crowded out blogs, you know, whatever. This would be the place to do it. Um, in the last, I just had to go back. It's been a while since I posted. I had to go back and listen to my last podcast and uh, just basically see how many times I lied to you <laughs> so that I could respond about that um, or own up to it in this episode. Uh, I told you I was going to, oh yeah, show you all the socks I've knit in the last few years in this episode. Um, yeah that I was going to record myself knitting my Recycle, Re-Knit, Remake vest and show you how that works up. And what was the other one? Oh yeah, I showed you like 10 summer sweaters that I wanted to make, but I said I'd probably only get around to two or three. Lies. All of it lies. Uh, a lot of life stuff happened and I didn't get to any of that. One child broke a bone and I helped more around the house with her. The other came in for the summer from college and our home is just more full and boisterous and all of that just seemed more important than knitting or at the podcast. So that's kind of what's been happening. Oh, also like my husband and I both strangely had some health like I guess you would say health scares, but doctors just feeling like, oh, these numbers aren't good. And we had to take a million tests and screenings and we were really busy, especially me. And uh, anyway, lots of bills later, I'm fine. We're both fine. <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna live to see, you know, the hour long episode where I talk about socks. <laughs> so uh, I'll be okay. Um, anyway, so speaking of the sock episode, um, the reason I haven't done it is because I had those Ready Player One, um, colorway socks from Mustache Yarns. I was going to make my first afterthought heel where I did not use any waist yarn and I was just kind of nervous about it and I need to sit down, I need to really read the method. I believe that Susan B. Anderson has added that to her uh, smooth operator sock pattern, which is like, to me, the ultimate cuff down after anything where you want a colored heel. It's just the ultimate pattern for that, especially with self-striping yarns. I think that she's added it to it, but either way, I just have not um, read up how to do it. So I've put that off and I, I want to have those finished. I want to make those two heels before I show all the socks. So I did mention to you in my last episode that I was working on At the Vicarage by Olivia Villarreal. She is This Handmade Life on Instagram and Ravelry. And At the Vicarage is based on an Agatha Christie novel, Murder at the Vicarage. It was my first Agatha Christie novel to ever read. 
This is Knit in Herb's Black Regina um, Oak Sock Base. That is a dyer. She's no longer dying, but I really loved this base, and I talked about that some in the last episode. Since then, I have knit both socks. This is Happy Backyard Chicks. It's such a cute little colorway with all the little specks that make you think of, I don't know, yard eggs. Um, I enjoyed reading the book and I thought, you know what, I am liking using this older yarn, like just single skeins that I collected over the years from sock dyers. And sadly, so many of them aren't dying anymore, so I kept digging for more because I am trying to use all that stash, you know, and I found two skeins from Miss Mothballs. And I, she is also not dying anymore, but that's what her label looks like. This one was called Wild Rose. It's 75.25. And then the other was Blooming Sage. So this is a gray with, you know, a lot of violet, little specks of blue, and other little colors, some green in there. I really, I really thought this would be good for one of Olivia's other patterns. And she has another one kind of based on at Murder at the Vicarage. It's called Tea and Scandal. But something about that pattern, I just didn't feel like it would look right with this colorway. So I am doing her Sweet Woodruff. She has um, some patterns also based on Anne of Green Gables, which was another book I loaded up in my Kindle years ago and never got around to reading. And I have recently because I finished a book in the middle of the night and I was having trouble sleeping and so I wanted to read something. So I started Anne of Green Gables and Sweet Woodruff. Um, nope doesn't say that it's based on anything, but here's the way it's supposed to look. And I thought this colorway would work nicely. The back part of the sock, the back of the leg is in stockinette, so you can see how this blooming sage works up. And then Here's a bit of the patterning. I like this fold over cuff. It's really long and you can fold it over if you want. And here's some of the patterning. I'm enjoying that. So we will, I will use this for another one, probably another Olivia of Olivia's patterns. I definitely want to uh, knit one of her Anne of Green Gables themed patterns. Kindred Spirits is also a fold over cuff. It's got a nice thick cable. That is a really good winter sock. So I've actually busted out my wool socks to wear this summer, which is just crazy. I would never normally do. I'm normally just too, you know, warm in the summer, but with my son home, he's like always hot. So we end up using our air conditioned more. So I've actually pulled out some knitted socks to wear around the house. So that's what I have as far as the socks and the next episode, I really do think I'll cover those. Okay, so I said I thought I'd get around to two or three summer knits and I've, I've done the most piddly of anything on anything. I mean, it's really sad how little I've done. I cast on for the raw tea and that was it. Here's my cast on. You begin with a uh, short rose in the back. So I have so much to show you guys. Look, aren't you excited? Aren't you glad you tuned in to see an inch of stockinette? But really, this is a really great Lindy Chain color. I love using Lindy Chain. Um, it's not as easy on the hands as wool, but I do like it. I feel like it's nice and plump with the little chainette, uh, the way, you know, the strand is like a chainette. You're not gonna be able to see. But anyway, um, there you go. This is a little chainette. It gives it a little fullness, and uh, I am excited to work on that. And then rather than cast on anything else, I had 
An Old Beginning of May by Andrew Mowry. And this was knit in Barocco's Remix Light. And I think it's only a two skein project, which I don't really trust. I probably wasn't going to make it as long as Andrea's. Uh, here's what hers look like. It's pretty long. I doubt I was going to make mine that long because I just don't see two skeins of yarn. Maybe I have three. I just don't see it being enough for this. But this is that. Uh, that was so long ago. Oh my gosh. I started this in 2018. I was going to knit a size large with two skeins. That just doesn't sound right. Jennifer is the name of this. I mean, 864 yards is what I have. Uh, it, it'll be a medium. It'll have to be. The medium is 830 yards. Uh, maybe I was going to make it shorter, but do the size, large size sleeves, whatever. I don't know. You start at the bottom and you work up. And again, it begins with a short row. And I think I just got past the short row part and I was ready to just work in the round. And I took it to see like the new Top Gun movie or something with my uh, husband and son and then immediately messed up and got frustrated and put it down. So... I didn't want to start something new, but hey, you know, it's good to get through something, uh, to finish something I started a while back. My neighbor is drilling or pressure washing something. It's really loud, and my son is on the other side of the wall fussing at Call of Duty, so I don't know what you're going to hear. Those are the only summer things I've worked on. And I should really, I mean, I, I got that yarn. You saw it uh, from Pearl Soho and this Lindy chain for the raw tea. I really need to be working on those things, but I did get one other thing. Oh, and by the way, this is from Katrinkles Knitting Jewelry. And she's one of the first people like knitters that I followed on Flickr and might have been part of why I started like filling in projects way back when like I don't know 2008 or something on Ravelry and since then she started her business with her knitting jewelry and knitting you know utensils and tools and this sock ruler is really helpful for letting me know when to stop making a cuff or when to stop working on the toe or the foot of something whether you want to go cuff down or toe up it it, you have your sizes, men's and women's sizes, and uh, or just inches, and it's it's been really helpful for me, even to do my own if I don't want to like constantly try on a sock. I, it also helped me when I was making socks last Christmas as gifts. Just wanted to mention that because I said it last time. So when I was at Hill Country Weavers recently to um, just kind of have a knit together on a test knit, I saw Tony Lipsy's Frankie bucket hat that uh, somebody had knit up. Let me show it to you as a store sample. And I thought, oh, that's a summer knit that probably wouldn't take too long, right? And, uh, I don't know. I just thought it would be, uh, it's crochet. It's not in it. I thought it would be a fun way to continue trying crochet, like I talked about in the last episode. And so I found some Barocco Faro yarn on sale. I wanted something that was a little, very summery. Uh, the sample was knit in wool cotton, Madeline Tosh wool cotton, just like it is in the pattern. And that's a beautiful yarn, and I'm sure it's a lot of fun to work with. I did not want any wool at all, because I will actually wear this to hike. I will wear it, wear it to walk my dogs, and I will get, it's like 107 here, you know, right now. I will get warm. So this is 80% cotton, 20% nylon. And it felt like something that would wash up well, air dry well. And this is kind of a khaki 
color. It's got a little bit of a pink and green undertones in it, but overall the effect is kind of a summery khaki. So I got like four balls of this. It should be plenty to knit up the Frankie bucket hat. So that is another summer knit I'm going to get around to. And actually that's something I could use year round because I wear a hat all the time outside. I've like in the last couple of years, I decided to get serious about, you know, protecting my skin because I spend hours outdoors each week. So that's another thing that I'm interested in doing. Another lie I told you. Let's see. I told you that I would be making a video of me knitting my vest because I showed you a video in the last episode. It was a little short, two minute minute and a half video of me taking my Eastwood cardigan apart and reusing uh, to reuse it. And I showed you I had the sleeves that are going to be leg warmers and the pockets are going to be glasses case. And I was just going to try. I finally decided by the end of the episode while I talked to you guys that I would just make up a pattern and it would be fun. It would be a nice little challenge good for my brain. Um, you know, it's kind of like they say Sudoku is good for you as you age. That's how I see this. And I've done that and I don't know where my notes are, but when I go to, uh, put it all together, I'm just going to have all the notes. Like if you wanted to copy this and just add width or add length to it, you could, I'm going to have it all available on my blog for you. But anyway, here's the, the back. So because I don't have a lot of yarn, I'm not going to make a straight, like, uh, almost like a drop shoulder sweater without the sleeves. I don't want that kind of vest because I know I just don't think I have enough yarn for it. So I made this have a little more of a racer back fit. This will be the back, but it isn't, um, it, it's not going to be fitted at all. <laughs> it's not going to be fitted, but it does have a bit of an indention, you know, here. So this will be the back and I've left, um, uh, open stitches here. I'm going totally blank on all of my knitting terms. Stitches, knits, purls. Okay. Stripes. The end. <laughs> Once I made a thing. Bye. Um, I'll, I'll add it in text at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> uh, I started with that kind of cast on so that I could add to it and knit forward, you know, for the front of the vest. And also I'll probably let how much I have by the time I get to the bottom determine like how deep the V is. Do I want to do a eunuch that's deep or do I want to do a, a V? I'm not sure, but you can see I've reached the bottom of the armhole. So I could wear an oversized t-shirt like this under this. And um, I'm, you know, maybe two and a half, three inches into the body. And this is my stripe pattern. So it's like 10, stitches of gray and then I do two of the green, eight of the gray, two of the green, then ten. I basically just kind of guessed a good stripe pattern since I had so much more gray than green. And all I'm doing, I'm not going to film myself knitting this. Oh my gosh, it would take forever. I've been, uh, I set up my camera and I would knit an inch or so and take a photo of it. And that's fine, except my family just got sick of stepping around the camera and the lights because it was taking me forever to do it because of all the other stuff I told you has been going on. So I am still going to do that and I am enjoying it. And I will show you, you'll just see it grow like stop, start animation. Sarah um, remembered, commented in the last one, she remembered knitting this vest at the same time as me. And I do remember Sarah's vest. She did so many of those Hollinets patterns and they looked so good. I'm a, uh, Hollinets is one of those sources back in the day that I still have, I knit a lot of those patterns, but there's still some I haven't. And I think about that romper that Lilith the Boldy 
designed um, there's several there's a cardigan I want to make and one I have cotton for a kind of a breezy summer cardigan anyway there's plenty of things I want to knit still from that source but um, they're all they're all still available on Ravelry but maybe I'll link to uh, Sarah's project if you're on Ravelry because it was good so um, another source from way back when that I used to enjoy was Tara Lynn Morrison's Stay Fancy Free that was a maybe it was a Tumblr or a Flickr account and that was her blog Stay Fancy Free and it basically it later evolved into Good Night Day where she is selling her patterns and I did finish her Dresden Beret I don't think this was finished I did it in the Mare colorway which is Madeline Tosh vintage and it's got so much little white old dog hair from my old dog look at this oh, my hair his hair but I added a little length to the body but it doesn't really look like I did but I did and I really love this beret it's really cute and I'm ready for winter this is a beautiful colorway let's see if you can see the the dark browns and blue let's get it right about here yeah that's pretty accurate isn't that lovely this is a nice simple beret pattern. I meant, I thought I would make it floop even more, but I don't know. I tried it on and I asked my husband what he thought and he thought I should end it right here. So I did. Meanwhile, you should see he wears water socks everywhere. And I took his advice. Um, Tara's newest good night day volume it's like volume three of her patterns is out right now for pre-order if you're interested in that uh, she does have the ebook available right away and a lot of the patterns are available separately but i did want the printed version she's used art and ray for the photographs and her other books and i just love her photography uh, i think arden did some in this but I think Tara's daughter did quite a bit of the photography and maybe some other uh, artists so anyway I was interested in having the print version to look at and to just go in my collection you know I asked you about older sources of patterns and Tara's older books are some of those that I've, I've actually knit a lot of her patterns from but I like saving them and having them now Pam said that she recently went through all of her older pattern books like even pom-pom and just cleared them out she rehomed them because she's like i'm not using them so it's just taking up space she has done a major purge at her home uh, and i admire your ability to go ahead and let go of things that you're not using pam i really struggle with knitting stuff because i just like looking at it even if i'm not going to knit from it and I, especially when there's pretty pictures, <laughs> but I am seeing my bookshelf uh, that my husband made and it's like, oh, this is big. It'll take us a long time to fill it. I am seeing how it could fill up pretty quick with all the Lina and making and making stories and just all of these uh, magazines. I'm a Risu pom pom, but I am not ready to part with any of those. So this brings me to the other reason that I totally lied to you about all the stuff I was going to accomplish in the last episode. I think it was like episode 56. And it's a good one. You will understand when you see it. Isn't this awesome? You've probably seen little teasers online of Dawn Barker's Murder of Crows sweater. But I got to test knit it, and oh my gosh, I love her patterns. You know that I knit her mend shawl that used the assigned pooling technique, where every time you come to um, the little 
you know, pop of different color, the contrast color, you make a certain kind of stitch that's different than, say, the stockinette background. This is a different stitch than used in Mend. Mend had a the look of mended jeans, but this is a different stitch. It's a kind of bobble, but oh my gosh, and I got to do it in her yarn. This is the Nightfall AP colorway. AP is for assigned pooling. You've probably seen this, but I don't know if you realize, like, she's the OG AP designer. Dawn is the one who invented the term assigned pooling. So anyway, Dawn actually doing something new. I'm kind of sick of seeing the same old thing all the time. Kind of, you know, spit out, regurgitated uh, all the time. Like, one reason I think, I, well, I don't want to be a designer, but like, if I could have at one point, uh, maybe I had enough steam behind my blog or my Instagram or whatever, um, before you had to <laughs> sing and dance for your supper on Instagram. Um, I don't think I would have done it because I would have felt like, you know, most of what I want to do is going to be derivative. I just don't feel great charging people for same old, same old that there's a free pattern of on Ravelry. But here's the thing. Um, this is something actually new and it's very exciting to me. Uh, Dawn has come up with all these different ways to use the type of yarn that a lot of us have in our stash and that she has dyed quite a bit of already. So she started working with what she had and she started creating these AP patterns, assigned pooling patterns to work with her variegated style yarn. Then she started tweaking her yarn to work with different kinds of patterns and she's just gone all these different directions. She has I don't know, like eight patterns, assigned pooling patterns out now, maybe more. Um, there's several I want to make, but when I saw that her test knit went up for Murder of Crows, which it does look like birds in flight, doesn't it? Really cool. I knew, oh man, I really want to do that. And I'll show you the whole thing, you know, next week or next, it's going to be next week, you guys. It will be. Anyway, I'm really... So you can see why I dropped everything because this was great. So when I wasn't like oh, at a doctor's office or, you know, doing things with my family, I was working on this sweater and I just can't say enough good things about Dawn's patterns. I want to show you some of her yarn that when I went to, um, she actually taught a a class, several classes at Hill Country Weavers, and they all had an emphasis on using your scraps, which I love, right? Because that like recycle, re-knit, remake. And uh, the one I went to had to do with her jawbreaker sweater, where you make a magic ball of yarn. Let me show you one I made. Oops. Now she calls them jawbreaker. Um, balls, jawbreaker skeins. Um, I've seen them called magic cake, but here's one I made to use for my little crochet granny square blanket, which is on hold <laughs> for now because I'm gonna do 10 summer sweaters, you know. Um, but I kind of just put this all together. It's colors that I like, and there's a whole lot of this teal. There's a whole lot of blues and teals in there to kind of unify it. And this will also, this is like, mm, Poseidon maybe from Knit Pick Stroll. It'll probably be, it'll be a main color in it, if not the border. It went with my, um, like a wall, a contrast, a whatever you call it, focal wall in my bedroom where I used to live. Now it's just fun. So, she encourages you to make this and she has a really, I mean, you can be as methodical as you want or just haphazard, you know, like the placing, the placement of these was different for every test knitter, even people knitting the same size. It just was so random. You may have seen her yellow sweater that she's shown little bits of. It's done sideways. 
in a different kind of stitch but this AP technique it's so awesome um, I'll link to it on her Instagram in the notes so while I was there learning about ideas for the jawbreaker sweater and learning lots of different ways to use stash um, let me just slip this in here I have a photo somewhere she did you remember um, latch hook kits back in the 80s my sister would start a latch hook kit and she like didn't finish but I, I remember finding the little bits you know and I'm screaming latch hook like con um, Dawn did that with her little bits of you know like when someone's tying up a skein of yarn they'll have the thread for tying well she had been saving she saves it all little bits of of her little yarn ties her skein ties um she was saving them and she's like i'm just gonna make a a latch hook type pillow out of it she's done a wall hanging some pillows and the bottoms of them kind of fray they have kind of a felted look it, it's just like kind of like this you know this is not her yarn but you get the idea it is so cool looking which makes me want to do like a latch hook wall hanging with bits of yarn and leftover stash little bits that you have left over from a project I always have a little ball of something she talked about good ways to like weigh out and kind of plan your color changes like for her jawbreaker sweater um, she also talked about just doing things in a haphazard random kind of way and I like that about her I like her emphasis on using what you have and I've appreciated that her assigned pooling patterns, all of her patterns, they really do work best with her yarn. But like with my mend sweater, I had some Knit Picks yarn. I thought at one time I would make a sweater, uh, and that was like way back when I first discovered Knit Picks. I bought that yarn. I, it's not enough to make a sweater that would fit me now. I don't know if it would have been, but I could use it for her uh, mend shawl. So I just really enjoy that about that her projects and there's always something inventive and interesting about them and she's doing something innovative. Um, you know, I like plenty of straight up patterns that aren't super quirky or unique, but it did excite me in the last year or so to see something so new happening. And something that encourages us, I mean, it encourages us to use what we have and to think a little outside of the box. So anyway, I was excited to work on Murder of Crows. Anyway, when I was taking her class, I looked at, she had a lot of pop-up, like a trunk sale of a lot of her yarns. And I picked up a few to make some more of her assigned pooling patterns. So she has another assigned pooling sweater pattern already out right now and it is called Loriculture. You've probably seen it. I really like the stripes. So it's not only got the assigned pooling little stitch change but it also incorporates stripes. Yeah. So I really enjoyed, I mean I like this, this very bold contrast but one of the things I wanted to try with her pattern, and I may use this yarn for that sweater, I might do one of her shawls instead, because she has a shawl that does a similar stitch and also stripes. Um, I wanted to try something that was less con high contrast. So I thought I would combine her, this is all her fern base, uh, yarn which is 85 25 85 15 so 85 superwash fine merino 15 nylon i thought okay this boro is a dark dark blue and then her in high feather it is an ap colorway but it is less um less poppy it's le it's less of a contrast it doesn't have just such a bright change that's obvious like a two color change here it's got a little more going on and so your your darkest portion 
would be where you would do your AP stitch. Let me see if I can just pull this out and kind of show. Yeah, so this is such a rich, um, it's going into blue, brown and dark blue and there's almost just a purple look to that darkest portion. So when I would hit these dark places, that's when I would probably do the stitch. But I don't know, it might be with the light. I, I'm really thinking you can be creative and do what you want, but I'll be, I'll check into it more. I haven't made my mind up what pattern I want to do with it. But anyway, I got the Boro and the In High Feather. I can't do that. Let me fix this. Let's pretend I watch knitting videos a lot. She just discovered knitting. Okay. Another combination that I thought would be nice would be Steadfast, again, which is what the base main color of this is. It's a very dark charcoal with Viridian. And I thought those might be nice for one of her shawls. You know, she's got some, the really big ones are the really cool ones to me. She's got some really cool uh, shawl patterns with this assigned pooling, um, but they're large. They would require four skeins, maybe three skeins. So she has some smaller versions like, say, I thought for that one I would do Glide. Glide is the smaller version of Float. And I like that it's a stockinette base with ribbed edges and those little AP stitches go all the way out into the ribbing. I think that's really cool looking. Which my sweater did just a little bit of right here. And I, it would be cool if someone did it to the hem the ribbing at the bottom. Anyway, I thought I might do that with Viridian and Steadfast Do Glide. Drift is another one that would just require two skeins. So, drift is similar to Floriculture in that it has, it includes stripes. I actually think I want to use the Steadfast and the Viridian for this because I think it'll be a nice bright stripe contrast. <coughs> and Hazel and Winterfield, I don't know where they are actually. Oh, here's Winterfield. Oh, no, I cried in my hands. Blah. That's these two. So they would look nice together. And Winterfield is another not quite so obvious <laughs> to me AP colorway, but it would be during this little mustard pop that I would do that. The rest of the yarn has a variegated speckled look. So I'm really excited about working on some more projects by Dawn. And when I was working on uh, my Murder of Crows sweater, one of the other test knitters turned me on to this little light that you can choose if it's white or warm toned and it can angle it. You can make it bend, you know, however, look down, whatever. And it can even be a light that you set up on a table to be over you. Um, it charges with a USB plug and oh my gosh, it saved me from missing stitches. This is such a dark yarn and it gets dark in the evenings and if people wanna watch TV or something, I have been busting this out anytime anyone wants to watch a movie or whatever. I won't take it to the theater, but I actually might if I sat on the back row. This has been super handy. I'll have a link to where I got it. It is an Amazon product though. <laughs> One other thing that I didn't say I was going to do, but I am. I want to make a baby blanket for a friend. And these are similar to the colors they were thinking of for their lay. Is it lay it? Is that what you call it for your baby? Um, like crib stuff and 
um, crib skirt decorations like that. These are, I really wanted to try Alexandra Tavel's um, Lion Brand colorways and color theory, but it, it's 100% acrylic and I didn't really know what I would use it for. It is light, it's not wool, but it just does seem a worsted weight. If it's not linen or cotton, I just don't know that I would be comfortable in it in the summer. So I thought this is a good way to try it because I looked everywhere for the right colors in stock, also on sale, and did not find them except in color theory. So I'm excited to see how these crochet up into a blanket. And I'm thinking of doing basically what I did. I did another baby blanket for a friend. I used a magic cake kind of thing. I uh, just had random stripes and here and there I would have, no, actually the last one I did wasn't a magic cake. I actually bought the yarn from Knit Picks. I think it was Brava. See, I used one, two, three, four colors for this. I'm only going to be using three. I think I'm just using Attic, yeah, it's the Granny Stripes Blanket by Lucy of Attic 24. What I think I'll do is I'll make um, two stripes in this color, one in this, two in this, one in this, and it will give it, hopefully, kind of a, I don't know, some visual interest. And I thought that would work well with only using two colors. So I don't know what will happen with my other projects because this has to happen by the end of August. But the last one I did, I made it so fast. Let's see. January 29th to February 3rd. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was like in a week. Okay. Okay, I'm good. Uh, I remember the first one I made in like 10 days that I did for Jennifer and uh, it came out so good. So basically the stuff my question for you this week is about the stuff I mentioned at the beginning of this episode. Um, what are you thinking about creative thinking and writing on the internet? You know, crafting, this is very creative and all, but there is a monetization to it now that's discouraging. Did you used to blog? Did you used to have a place where you could go type pad or something and kind of write your thoughts and share your creative process that now you don't really feel you have a place for? Are you still able to do it on Instagram or do you, does it feel just too commercial? One of the things I did that was crafty while taking this little break this summer from podcasting, it was an unintentional break, like I said, life, but I did get some blog posts up and I really enjoyed that. I haven't done that as much over the last several years and I miss it. And some of them are more thoughtful and some are just strictly knitting details, but it feels good. It feels a little like when you doodle and just jot some thoughts down in a spiral notebook. One day you're going to go back and you're going to read it and you're going to maybe get a kick out of it. Or even if you're like me, you're going to be digging for that restaurant napkin that you wrote that idea down on so that you can recreate it. So a lot of my blog is just me writing down, don't forget, do this, this, and this with links so that I'll find it later. And I do refer back to it a ton for things. So, um, I just wondered, you know, how you guys are feeling about social media, um, the way it's changed. It's more revenue focused. Everything is about starting a business. Like everybody's, I don't know, it, there's a pressure to definitely, definitely a pressure to move to video for anyone selling anything. So, uh, I just wondered like, um, what your thoughts are on being creative and sharing it socially online. How are you doing it? Is it working anymore for you? Did you used to blog and then you moved to Instagram and now you're frustrated? Are you having trouble finding people that you used to readily see because you followed them purposefully and now they're being crowded out by other things? Um, do you feel that the nature of how we share has changed? I think I mentioned earlier, 
how much I loved the freedom to just get online, read blogs, and I learned how to do so many things for free by the generous, I don't know, people sharing generously online. And now all of that information is kind of behind a paywall, it seems, often. Um, I don't know. I'd like to hear, please, your thoughts on sharing your creative life online or other people sharing it. Where do you go for that? Uh, have you stopped? Or is it still going strong? Do you love it? And what blogs did you used to follow, say back in the early 2000s, that you might want to share with us so that we can check them out and uh, maybe kind of go down memory lane with you? Please share, please, please, please. I'm gonna like emphasize that I want this information because I'm interested. I really wanna know what you guys have to say. All right, I will see you next time and that's no lie. <laughs> Famous last words, right? <laughs> Bye. <laughs>